brief detour to go over what the oracle said last time. So what he was saying was basically that each side of the well represents a house, and if each house may not be a literal house, it's more like a cast. But the House of Tantrum is made up of people who mainly focus on combining and coordinating the efforts of other houses and recognizing the importance of sharing knowledge and discoveries. So their goal is to make sure that everybody else's goals don't end up like a repeat of the Library of Alexandria. In other words, open knowledge between all houses. It would appear that as we finish the rest of these puzzles, we're going to start learning a little bit more about the mythology of this culture. So let's get to the next one. The tile thingy. Hope there's more than just one. Now this is a room. It actually looks like I could live here. Over here, there's a little inlet in the wall for some, I guess, dishes. And over here, there is a nice little... What is this? interesting. What was that floating triangle? It looked like the oracle only in a different kind of 3D than the 3D we saw earlier. Like as opposed to the full 3D triangular pyramid we have a, just an extrusion of a triangle prism. Ugh. Bugger this. Let's go into the fireplace. I don't know. This looks like a fireplace. No it doesn't. Okay. Okay, we have a bunch of tiles, we can rotate them, we can move them, we can move them again, and each tile has four different symbols, a sun, an earth, I think, not really, a bagel, or, okay, let's stick with the planetary theme and say a moon, or a web, let's stick with the planetary theme and say a supernova. No, actually, I'm just going to say a web for that, that really looks like a web. What are we supposed to do here? Now we have four suns, two moons there, and then we got an earth moon. What is going on here? The contemplative mind is our greatest strength. Thank you very much, Captain Obvious. Out of darkness, of watery chaos, came the earth, the wind and air, the moon and water, and the fiery sun, never to mingle again. So I was right about the earth, moon, sun. Don't know where the web comes from, but never to mingle again. Okay, so on the edges of the tiles are connecting to other things, and they can't be mingling. And there's four separate symbols in each tile. Now, we can't do anything about mingling within a tile, because every tile always has four different symbols in it, but we can do something about mingling between tiles, like those uh, two moons plus those moon and that earth. So I guess we're supposed to put this in such a way that every symbol connects to every other symbol when it's adjacent to another tile. But what kind of different tiles do we have? Let me move everything up so that sun is facing up. All right, now that I'm anchoring at sun, I can say we have a sun, moon, sun, moon, web, earth, sun, moon, earth, web, sun, 
earth web moon. Okay, so we have different types of tiles here. Some of them are repeated like the sun, moon, earth web thing. Never to mingle again. Adjacent tiles must not contain different symbols. This puzzle is a bit challenging at first. It probably looks a lot more challenging than it actually is. We have to put 10 unique tiles, or 10 tiles I should say, in a form so that every symbol is touching every other symbol. But we can start at actually a more abstract level and then bring, that, bring the concrete back in. That probably makes no sense because I said it wrong. So let's just start at the beginning. Using sun as an anchor, as we did earlier, there are six unique tiles. Actually, there are six unique combinations anyway, or six unique permutations anyway, if you exclude uh, rotation. So, for example, sun, earth, moon, web would be the same as earth, moon, web, sun. It would just be another rotation of that. Um, so, the counts are here. Four of them come up two times, and the other two come up one time. What does this mean for us? It means that we can construct or try to construct a abstract solution to the puzzle and make sure that the abstract solution fits those constraint counts. Because if you didn't have these constraints and you had a bunch of tiles to choose from, this puzzle would be easy. You could do any combination, there'd be so many solutions but the number of solutions available is based on the number of tiles that we have to play with. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by filling this up from this way all the way up to here. In case you haven't noticed, this is basically the puzzle just rotated in a way where it's more squarey. And to represent the symbols, I'm going to use the letters A, B, C, D. You can use 1, 2, 3, 4. You can use the Dunning numerals for one, two, three, four. You can do whatever you want. As long as they're not the same symbols here, and I'll explain why, is because let's start by throwing something here. We don't know what A stands for yet, but we do know that this would be a valid tile. A stands for something, B stands for something, C stands for something, D stands for something, all stand for a separate symbol. Whatever those symbols are, this would be a valid tile that could be here. And if this is a valid tile that can be here, this would have to be B and this would have to be C uh, here because part of the solution constraint is that they have to touch. So this also has to be C, this would have to be D, and because of that, we would have a four way here that would have to be C. Like I said, we don't know what those letters stand for, what symbols they are, but we do know that so far we're in a valid configuration. But from here, there's a bunch of other configurations we can now choose with those letter constraints. But let's start by counting up what we have. A, B, C, D. We have so far one A, B, C, D. If we ever reach a point where we have three or more of one of those kinds of tiles, let's say there's an A, B, C, D here, an A, B, C, D here, and another A, B, C, D there, we would know it's completely impossible for that configuration to be a solution because we don't have any configuration of tile symbols in which we have three of them. So let's make a choice. I'm going to choose C, or no, I'm not going to choose C because I'm not an idiot. <laughs> I'm going to choose A for that location there. Now, I could have chosen D here and that would have led to a completely different um, solution set going up. But I have to make some kind of guess, so I'm going to guess that this would have to be A, and I'm going to circle it to remind myself that I guessed it. If this is A, this has to be D. If that's A, then this has to be A here. Now, do we have another choice to make here? Actually, we don't. The reason being is because one of these has to be B, and the other one has to be D. Now, if we choose D to be here, this D here makes it impossible for us to put a D here to satisfy that you have to border constraint. 
and there is no tile where a symbol is repeated. Every tile has each of the four unique symbols in some configuration. So it is impossible to have a C, D, D, A something tile. So D can't be here. D has to be here, which means B has to be here, which means B has to be here, which means A has to be here, which means that A has to be here, D has to be here, D has to be here, D has to be here, and B has to be here. We've made only one choice so far. And look how much we've already, well, solved. Technically speaking, we'll be tying this back up to something else later, but we've already made some good progress here. But what are our, our counts? Now, this is A, B, C, D. Because I choose to anchor at A, or anchor at, I, I chose to anchor at the sun in the game, but there's no guarantee that A is going to be the sun. But for the purposes of counting the unique tiles, I'm just going to use A as the anchor point. And a tile's identity will be considered start at A and go clockwise, and that letter order is that tile. So, for example, this is A, B, C, D. For here, we're going to go and continue clockwise, starting at A, A, C, B, D. Be very careful here. I actually have some mild dyslexia, and I kept hitting problems when I tried to solve this by getting the counts wrong because of that. Like, I would read this as A, B, C, D, for example. So be very careful, double check if you're doing this on your own. Uh, A, C, B, D. And we have an A, C, B, D up here. So A, C, B, D, A, C, B, D. And we've created an A, D. Once again, we start at A, continue in that direction. A, D, C, B. A, D, C, B. We have one of those. In the middle, we created an A, D, B, C, A, D, B, C. So, so far we have one of uh, each of the tiles. We haven't doubled up any tiles yet. We're probably going to shortly. Now, what do we want to choose for that up there? Well, we can choose either C or B to go here. I'm going to choose C and circle it, remind me that I chose it, which means that this has to be C. Once again, we have the same I wouldn't say predicament because we have to make less choices as we did before. B can't be here because B is already here. So since that means that, that means B has to be up here. A can be here, which means A has to be here. And then this has to be C. We've constructed three new things here. Before we fill out that, let's remember to count up things. A, B, C, D. We have another one of those. A, D, C, B. A, D, C, B, we have another one of those. A, C, B, D. A, C, B, D, A, C, B, D. We have another one of those. Ooh. Well, we're still in the ballpark here because four of them have two. And right now we have three of them that have two. So we're not, we're not lost yet. Let's just make our final choices. Let's say we have this to be A, this would have to be D, this would have to be A, and we have a situation here as well, C and D. Actually, we, it doesn't really, we do have a choice where we can put the C or D because, well, we have a choice. But first of all, let's count this up. This is A, B, C, D. A, B, C, wait, let me double check. A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. We're already wrong. There can't not be, there's no sis, no instance where we have three of any kind of tile. So this configuration cannot possibly map to a valid solution, no matter what symbols we sign to A, B, C, and D. So let's go back and change it to A, D. Let me pick up the chunk, all right? So A, D, B, C. A, D, B, C. Now we need an A, B, D, C somewhere. So we know we have to get an A, B, D, C somewhere. We can make one like this, A, B, D, C. And then if we do that, that becomes a, oh, wait, can't do that. We have double uh, D over there, I wish. And so we're going to have to make an A, B, D, C up there. A, B, D, C. 
We also can't do that, which means this choice here to add, make this a C was the last choice uh, we made that we can jump back to because we've exhausted all of our current possibilities. So we counted the A, D, B, C. Let's get rid of that. And let's remove the choices we made up to this point. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back down to the choice to make that a C, turn it into a B, turn that into a C, and then completely redo this entire thing. It's two there, A, C, B, D, which means this has to be a B. Now we have to place the A and the C in here. And unlike before, we actually do have a choice now. Where do we want to put the A? Well, I am going to choose to put the A up here, which will make this a C, which will make this a C, which will make this an A. Now we counted up five, because that was counted, now we just need to count these two. A, C, D, B. A, C, D, B. A, B, B, C. And let's, uh, the numbers look better. We have a little bit more leeway now. All right, let's make another choice. What can't we double up? We cannot double up A, C, B, D. So, and thankfully the only place we can actually accidentally do that would be here. Um, <laughs> if there's a C here, so there can't be a C there. So since there can't be a C here, there can't be a C here, which means the C has to go here. The D can go there. And now we have an A, B, C, D. A, B, C, okay. A, B, C, D. Now this time, we only had one of those. So now we can add another one. A, B, C, D. And then this one also has to be a D. And now we're missing, we cannot double up A, B, C, D or A, C, B, D. Uh, so A, D. If we make that a B, we can't make that a B actually because we have to make that a C and there's a C down here. So this has to be a B, this has to be a C, which means we have A, D, C, B, A, D, C, B. And then this has to be uh, a B, A, B, D, C, A, B, D, C. Voila. Now, what does this mean? It means we have an abstract solution that can be mapped back to the concrete solution because the number of tiles, of unique tiles, combinations of this letter configuration match that of the actual puzzle. All right, the second step. Now what we have to do is find a mapping such that A equals one of these symbols, B equals another of the symbol, so that when the symbols are substituted for the letters, they match up with exactly with what the counts we have in the actual puzzle. So let's start with A, C, D, B. We have, this is equal to one, and we have two different symbol tile variant unique things that are both equal to one. So that means that A could equal to B equal to sun, C could be equal to web, D could be equal to earth, and B could be equal to the moon, or we can do A is equal to sun, D is equal to the moon, B is equal to web, and C is equal to earth. And I accidentally went to the wrong one. But the point is, we can map um, one of these to one of these. And then once we've done so, we then substitute those in and see if they work for the rest. So, let's start by trying to map sun, web, earth, and moon to A, C, D, B. If that's true, then A would be equal to sun, B would be equal to, B would be equal to the moon, C right there would be equal to the web, and D, D right there, D would be equal to the earth. 
Now let's say that's true. If that's true, then by substituting those same symbols into AD BC, we should also get one of the ones with one. You'll see. So if that's the case, then we have sun, earth, moon, web. Sun, earth, moon, web equal to one. Sun, earth, moon, web is actually equal to two. So this substitution doesn't work. So instead of substituting A, C, D, B with that one we chose, we'll substitute it with this one down here. Or we can substitute this one with the same one up here. Either way, it's the same concept. So let me remove this. Anything that's probably more obvious than the actual chalk, which is kind of funny when you think about it, only it's terribly inconvenient. So, what we're doing is we're mapping the same thing we just tried to map AC, DB, but down to here. So, A is equal to the sun, B is equal to the earth. C is equal to the moon, and D is equal to the web. So that means if A, that means it's sun, moon, web, earth. Sun, moon, web, earth. Now what about sun, web, earth, moon? Well, A, D, B, C if, is also another one that's equal to one, so sun, web, earth, moon. Sun, web, earth, moon. We don't have to do the other ones. If these both work out to one, the, all the other substitutions have to end up working out to the ones that are with two, simply because they're the only ones remaining. That's why I chose one. Which means that this configuration plus this concept of substitutions together tells us exactly what the solution state of the puzzle will look like. Once we know exactly what the solution has to be, what tiles go where, it's a simple matter of putting them there. Now you may be thinking, is this the only solution to the puzzle? And the answer is no. I tried this on paper and I also found another solution and I might, and I'm sure that there might even be, there are not too many different choices you can make actually, to be honest. Um, this is A, B, C, D, choosing something else like a up here, B up here, it doesn't change the fact that in the end you'll just make different substitutions and ends up creating mapping to the same exact concrete solution. What matters is the choices you make and the configuration of the letters with respect to each other. Um, so you might have a different abstract solution that maps to the same concrete solution, if that makes sense, because the substitutions would be a little bit different in the end. But the point is, there are not too many choices you have to make, and there's more than one solution to this puzzle. Doing it this way turned what looked like a very difficult puzzle into practically a piece of cake. A good amount of this puzzle difficulty also comes from trying to understand what to do. It's one of the few puzzles where, in order to know what you have to do, you actually have to interpret what the oracle is saying. Like, there's really not much of a way to feel around. I guess you could guess that they all have to be touching each other. I guess I just found it a little bit more difficult to figure out what was going on without interpreting the oracle. Let's hurry up, get this thing in, and listen to what the oracle says. The tasks resolved so far marked here are 20.
kindred stones for natural powers. Each portion of the well a house does make, and as each stone a jewel will it release, each jewel a gem of knowledge does encase. As by degree you gather these, you increase understanding. Then you become a jewel yourself, an asset to our symmetry. This time the house of Krida you have found, the city portion where such fertile minds do play. They devise and create enigmas every day.